and gents, I am with Simply Fantastic Zach Alexander, and he's going to share his thoughts on both the outcome of his last match with Mike Montero and what he's done to prepare and lead up to it. Zach? Bobby Rossi, as you know, me and Mike Montero, we've been best friends for a very long time. He's a brother to me. We grew up together, we trained together, we've been around pretty much almost the world together. Last week, he beat me. He hit me with the angel's wings, middle the ring, and he beat me. It's time to redeem myself. From day one that I stepped in this company, I've been clawing and scratching my way to be noticed. I've been trying, I've been working my ass off to be noticed in the eyes of not only the people, but everybody in the locker room. This best of seven isn't only to see who the true suicide king is, but it's to see if I have what it takes to wear that crown. What I'm getting off of you is a sense of maybe animosity towards your former partner. Am, am I no, wrong? No, no, no. You, you are wrong. It's not animosity. A lot of people have told me, oh, after the last show, we see some anger on your face. No, it's not anger. It's disappointment. Not in Mike Montero, but in myself. It's time to step it up, Bobby Rossi. 2012 is a new year, and 2012 is my year. I'm tired of being pushed around, I'm tired of being acting like a little kid. It's time to run with the big boys. Mike Montero is only a stepping stone that I need to get through on my way to the top. Folks, you heard it here first. In the spirit of competition and trying to get as far to the top as he can, he will take out any obstacle that is in his way. Unfortunately, it seems to be one of your best fights. Yeah. We'll see how this pans out, folks. Welcome, wrestling fans, to RWA's edition of Hype TV, Live at the Force. Up for grabs tonight will be both the World Triple Crown as well as the Junior Heavyweight title. But kicking things off here in a high gear as usual will be our best of the best series. Without further Hello ladies and gentlemen, Clem Cadiddle Hopper with you once again for an action-packed series of matches here at RWA Hype. Of course, joining me, my longtime friend and colleague, Mike Mifflin. Mike, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm feeling fantastic, Clem. I'm really excited to see this, uh, this number two out of seven matches that they're supposed to have. Best of seven series with the ace Mike Montero and simply fantastic Zach Alexander. Should be an incredible show today. Yes, they're trying to find out who is indeed the true Suicide King. Now, I was in the back earlier and I heard T. Phoenix saying that Sean Sin was the true Suicide King because he should kill himself. Now, I don't agree with that, but the man has a right to his opinion right here. Zach Alexander in the ring already taking a swig of water right here. He looks to be in great shape. He wants to redeem himself after that that crushing blow, or that defeat just last week. Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that Sean Sin should kill himself. Uh, you know, I wouldn't go as far to say that. But like you said, uh, Clem, everyone has opinions just like they have something else. But this is a PG show, so we're not going to discuss that here today. And here comes the ace, Mike Montero, the winner of the first match of the Best of Seven series, looking to win the second match as well against Zach Alexander. He's sporting a new hairdo there. I, I don't know I don't know what that is. Uh, what do you make of that? He's got braids for days. Well, you know, to each his own. I know they, they were together known at times as the metrosexual mafia. They, also, they always have a, a keen look about them, very unique. And, well, that, that takes the cake right there, but he looks as confident as, as ever. Like you said, he's looking to go up 2 and 0 oh on this best of seven series. That would be uh, that would be a big uh, mountain to overcome should he go up 2-0. to zero. I don't know if Alexander could, can uh, 
come back after that. I think what you meant to say, Clem, is a mountain to climb, but uh, not to overcome. But I don't mean to correct you at all on your grammar and how you say things. Just because uh, you know you went to the school of hard knocks and I went to you know a school of higher education, uh, that doesn't really mean too much here. But when it comes right down to it, the Soul Suicide King may be decided here in this match. This is a very very critical match for these two gentlemen. Now you see the collar and elbow tie up here. That's a normal starting point for every match. Now, these guys are the most non-normal wrestlers I've ever seen. They are very quick. They are very fast-paced. I might not know all the moves sometimes, Clem, but every once in a while I get lucky. The blind squirrel is bound to find a nut one of these days, right? That's right, Clem. And if you notice in the background, that, that official, that's, uh, well, that's the top gun, J.P. Hansen. He's a... Uh, taking on some officiating duties as of late. Maybe you uh, can shed some light on that. Well, I really don't know about the officiating duties. I, I think what uh, Bill Victor is trying to do is just trying to get some people who can uh, who can upstand law and order uh, inside those uh, inside the squared circle there. Uh, but I'm, I'm not completely sure about why he's doing that. I mean, uh, J.P. Hansen, obviously an accomplished wrestler. I mean, you would kind of figure that, oh, there you are. Look at that little flip there. Very nice. Takes back over the arm on, on, uh, on the ace, Mike Montero. Uh... You know, I'm really not a I'm really not a huge fan of this style of wrestling, Clem. I don't know if you are aware of you know with my background, but I'm more into the uh, the old school, the amateur style. These gentlemen move so fast, though, it is incredible. Uh, they have a lot of different holds that I am not familiar with and I've never seen before. So this should be a really really interesting matchup for me to call. I don't know about you, Clem, but uh, you know, I, it's just uh, it's amazing how quickly these men move. It certainly is at times. Be before I had the pleasure of sitting here having a broadcast colleague, calling this match by myself would have been damn near impossible. But thankfully, I'm blessed to have somebody like yourself here with me as we see an up and over and a leapfrog. And quick as a hiccup, as you can see. Uh, this, of course, uh, a, a regular one-on-one. -on -one. Arm drag there. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Clem. If I, if I know, if I, uh, oh, hey, how if, you doing? If I've been informed correctly, now each one of these best of seven matches will have a different quote-unquote gimmick, if you will. Uh, this one, a standard one-on-one. -on -one. The number one, the first match was a finisher-only match. And oh my oh, goodness! Oh, he just got slammed to the outside there. Very, not, very interesting. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I think what happened was Zach Alexander was uh, was trying to go over, maybe catch him in a cross body, uh, maybe a salto cross body. Uh, and then, look at this. What is, oh, what is that there? And, and I, I got to point out, he missed the mat completely where he landed with his knees. That's that's going to be uh, going to be painful on the the kneecaps right there. He could uh, find himself having knee surgery in the not too near future. Well, I mean, his M MCL and ACL could be completely damaged. But he's a young man. I mean, I'm sure that he would bounce back from that. I'm sure that'll Look hurt. This. What is this? Oh, here? whoa! Let him go. What is, what's happening here? I don't. I don't know what this is. A lot of a lot of different holds here. Oh, looked like he had him in some sort of hammerlock DDT. Very, very nicely done by Zach. Fantastic. Moved around to a couple of different body parts there. Spun around him a bit. Turned the ace, and uh, look what happened. Now you got a question. Under normal circumstances, Mike Montero is Zach Alexander's friend. Would you do that to your friend? I, I, you gotta, I mean, you, you know, you're taking his life into your hands. Has this, has, has this gotten personal now, or, or what is Alexander's motives here? Is it, it's a desperate measures because he is down 1-0 in this series? Well, I mean, it could be desperate measure, but it also could be the fact of, uh, you know, each of them obviously thinking that they are the sole suicide king, that they are better than the other man. I think Zach Fantastic is really trying to prove himself uh, that that he is the uh, that he is the pr the superior wrestler to the ace Mike Montero. Well, that is a fantastic botch you just made because that's Zach Alexander. Oh, Zach Alexander. I'm sorry. Excuse Going me. for the cover here. That's quite all right. If you want to call me out on a mistake, I'll call you out on a mistake, and we'll call it even right now. Yeah, that's fine. Fantastic. Looking forward to this broadcast, my friend. Look at this. Some shoulder, some shoulder blocks into the uh, shoulder tackles, I guess you would say, into the corner there. Oh, and there's one more. Maybe that's, maybe that's a desperate measure right there, my friend. Oh, oh one stiff kick to the back, make it two, three, four, five. You know, it's not only the right to be called the sole suicide king, 
the, these two individuals, they know this match of uh, victory in this series is going to elevate them many rungs up the ladder, and there could be championship opportunities. God only knows what in their near future after this. So it's not just it's not just the right to be so, called soul suicide king. There really is so much more to this, and and that may be playing a part in what we suspect to be is. Um, Desperation on Zach Alexander's part, or, or, or what have it, what uh, what have you, what have you, is what you were looking for there. And I just want to, I just want to point out right now, Zach Alexander making a very, very smart decision, putting him into the camel clutch type maneuver and trying, really trying to wrench the back of the ace Mike Montero. He is trying to take that away from him. Mike Montero still. Oh, look at this! Looks like a, a version of the STR, a reverse STO into the turnbuckle. That that, that can that have huge it. ramifications too. That certainly slowed Montero down in his track. Hanson says only a count of two. Right on top of things as usual, whether it be in the wrestling ring, as a referee or a wrestler. Oh, there's a shot to the gun and a punch to the face. Looks like a little Three Stooges action right there. Oh, beautiful, beautiful insecurity there, type maneuver. Rolls him over. One, two. Three, two. Zach Alexander is going to have trouble keeping the ace Mike Montero down. I have a sneaking suspicion. And you saw it for a second. He was sitting there, possibly getting frustrated. We saw some frustration uh, on his face last time, uh, last week. Big chop in the corner there. Make it two. I mean, it's got to be a crushing blow to the ego to know your partner was the one to carry you throughout this, and, and that's what it would it would what it would basically mean if you were to lose in in a four zero sweep or something. Well, I, I, you know, and, and I think that I think that that all comes into play. I mean, the, the the sheer frustration that Zach Alexander feels, I think, is completely justified. His back is up against the wall. Mike Montero is no, he's no joke. He's not a joke wrestler. Mike Montero is very, very skilled. And losing just one match to Mike Montero could could be extremely bad. Losing two could be even worse. Montero, one of the longer reigning RWA champions in history only surpassed by Logan Rose uh, a few months ago. Oh, a beautiful roll through there into a... That looked like a small package from that point. I don't know how you could have seen that. They both had their pants up. Uh, oh, wait, you met the wrestling hold. I understand now. Montero now looking to use the ropes to help him stand once again. And well, there's Zach uh, on the offensive, not giving him a moment to breathe. Crowd. You can hear them. They split. Both of these guys, big time fan favorites here in the RWA. Montero fighting back with some forearms there. Leaps right up to the top rope. Beautiful back elbow off of the top rope. That was a nice show of athleticism by Mike Montero. That's why they call him the ace. That was an ace up to sleep for sure. Well, that's actually one of the names of his finishing maneuvers. I know I was a play on words in this instance. Oh, 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 I see, I see. Very nice. Very nicely done. You would call that an ace in the hole, probably, instead of ace up the sleeve. Sure thing. Okay, very good. Clem, you are a wordsmith, my friend, an absolute wordsmith. Mike Montero now on the offense. Oh, and he, he gets caught with a, with a violent forearm from Zach Alexander, and they catch each other. I mean, that was magnificent. Goes for the chop. Reverse. Kick to the chest. Chop of his own. Oh, that was a beautiful round kick to the back of the head. Alexander could be out cold here. Montero turns him over. He's got a victory right here. Two. Very, very close. That was a very, very close pinfall right there, my friend. Very, very close. Hanson's hand was grazing the mat certainly surprised me. I thought he was out cold. A lot of resilience by the young man, Zach Alexander. Up we go. Nope. Oh, what do you call that, Clem? I don't even know what to call that. Well, me being the wordsmith that I am, I'm going to call that a uh, inverted bubble bomb. How do you like that? Inverted bubble bomb. Okay, that's that's pretty spot-on accurate. I like that. 
Not bad at all, Clem. If you add the word inverted to something, nine times out of ten, you'd be correct. Well, it looked like he was going for, for an inverted atomic drop right there, but he brought him to the turnbuckle instead. Now they're exchanging shots. This gets very risky up there on that second, on that second well, turnbuckle. Second, second end to the third. What are they doing here? Oh, and a violent, violent superplex right off of the second roll. Oh, my Both goodness. Both go for the pin. That would have been an interesting turnaround there in this match. What would you have done in that case? Well, I, I really, I, I really don't know. I mean, I, it would have been very interesting. Can you, can you have a tie? I mean, would, would a tie be sufficient in this match, or would he have to go to sudden death? I would, I would believe it's sudden death. And there's the angel's wings. Well, that's, that's the, the ace, ace up in the, the hole. Sleeve. Ace up the sleeve. Man, Got me all you confused. Are, you are. Uh, there's a roll up. I didn't botch that one. Sharpshooter, or that's the uh, shopper image. Oh man. You are a tough, Clem. You really need to read your notes before the matches, I think. We get notes? I don't have notes. Mike Montero drags Zach Alexander back into the ring, and that's it, folks. Very, very interesting. He did very, very little work on the back of Zach Alexander, but a move like that can put so much torque on the pelvic area, on the rib cage. You know, I, I think I think that that. Mike Montero made a very, very interesting decision by trying to apply that hold right then and there. Now, Mike Montero wins this match. Does Zach, Zach Alexander is down 2-0. to zero. Where do we go from here? What does Zach Alexander have to do to get a win in this best of seven series? I'm not sure, but where he's got to go is back to the drawing board, back to square one. He's got to strategize. Hey, hey, look at him. He's, he's visibly upset. He knows he, exactly what you're saying. It's almost like he can hear you right now because that is pure frustration right there. He is not a happy camper. Almost, you can see almost Mike Montero almost riddled with guilt. But this is the name of the game. It's, it's kill or be killed, so to speak. It's the best of, my friend. You have, you have seven matches to prove why you're the best, why you are the sole suicide king. You have the opportunity to do this being down 2-0 now your back is really against the wall he only has to win two more Montero now calling Alexander back into the ring will we have a handshake here I mean we should have a handshake I mean I hope Zach Alexander is is man enough and mature, and mature enough to do something and like that there we go hey very nice a little little handshake and a hug throws the arms up in the air very very nice uh, that is a good show of sportsmanship. That's what it's all about here in the RWA. We like to, to call ourselves sportsmen. We're not just entertainers. We're not just athletes. We are sportsmen. Well, we're going we're gonna to kick it backstage to Bobby Rossi. He's standing by with the investment, Antonio Otama, who takes on Mr. Awesome, Mike Rossa, coming up in a few minutes.